Hello students, this is Professor Ashish Tipatil from Department of Mechanical Engineering, KIT's College of Engineering, Autonomous Kolhapur. We are in the subject of Total Quality Management. Last time we have started Unit number 3 that is Customer Relation and Satisfaction in which last time we have seen the concept of consumerism and its origin. Today we will see the concept of customer. So what is customer and who are these customers? Customers are the most important people in the businesses. The businesses are there in the market because of these people, because of the needs and wants created by these people. Products are produced by the businesses or organizations and these products or services are ultimately sold to these people. So therefore, these people are the most important people because they drive the economy of the organization. These people are not dependent on the organization, rather organization depends on them. These people are not an interruption to work, but are the purpose for the organization or for that specific work. These people will make a favor when they seek business, when the needs are generated, the needs are communicated to the organization and based on these needs or wants, products are developed and in that way, these people will do a favor for that organization and ultimately organization will sell that product or service. So therefore, these people are the part of the business and these should not be considered as the outsiders. So, in a nutshell, what you can call these people as the life blood of your business. These people will come with their needs, accordingly products are produced and these products or services are sold in the market. These people also come with the jobs. The organizations will be in a position to develop the jobs because of the customers only, because of the customers, the organization will have the demands and based on those demands, more and more products will get developed and for which you need various resources like man, machine, material. So, ultimately the jobs are also created because of these people. So, this will be helpful for running the economy of the society. These people deserve the most courteous and attentive treatment because of their specific position in the market. What are the various types of customers? Now, there are two different types of customers. First one is internal customer and another one is external customer. When we talk about internal customer, these are the customers inside the company and therefore, they are called as internal customers. For example, if I am an engine manufacturer, so when I want to assemble my engine into assembly department, I will demand all the parts which are required for assembly from production department. So, in that way, assembly department will become the customer of production department. When the testing department will demand assembly department to send that assembled engine for testing purpose, then for assembly department, testing department will become the customer. When parts mounting department will demand the tested engine for ultimately mounting all the remaining parts or equipments or canopies on that engine, then the parts mounting department will become the customer of testing department. So, each department or each quality management unit is considered as a customer by the previous department and as a supplier for the next department. I hope you have understood the concept of internal customer with this example. 
Now, what is external customer? The customers which are outside the company, they are called as external customers who actually need the products, who actually wants the products. So, in other words, what you can call external customer as the one who uses the product or service, who purchases the product or service or who influences the sale of the product or service. So, what are different types of external customers? The first one is purchaser. Purchaser is someone who buys the product for himself or herself. You can take example of say clothing. You may buy clothes for you, for your children, for your spouse and so on. So, you will be treated then as purchaser or anyone who purchases food for his or her own family, then he or she will be treated as the purchaser. Then the end user or ultimate customer. End user or ultimate customer is that who finally benefits from the product. Take the example of the patient who is going for his health care related aspects to that facility center for say diagnostic testing. Now ultimately who will get benefited because of this diagnostic testing? The patient himself or herself. So therefore, this patient will be considered as the end user or say ultimate customer. Next is merchant. Now, merchant are the people who purchase the products for say reselling aspects. Wholesalers you can consider as the merchants. Wholesalers will buy the products from manufacturers in abundant quantity and then they will sell it to the retailing units for selling those units into actual markets or to the actual customers. Say if you are a manufacturing firm and if you are manufacturing the pumps, say processing pumps and if you are selling it to various processing industries in the market, then you will be having various distributors across the regions or say country and you will sell these products to these distributors and in turn these distributors will sell these products to those processing industries. So, these distributors are then called as merchants. Same is the case with travel agents or say brokers. Next is processors. Now, processors are the organizations or those people who use the product or the output of one industry as input of their industry to produce their own product. For example, if you consider a refinery which will receive the crude oil, then that refinery will process that crude oil and they will then manufacture different products from that crude oil and these products will be sold to various customers. Now, this processing industry will be considered as the processor. Next is supplier. Now, supplier is the one who provide input to the process. For example, if you are a foundry and if you do not have any machining facility under your roof, then you will produce those castings in your foundry and those castings will be sent to the another company who are having machining facilities. That company will machine those components on various machines and those machine finished products will be sent back to the foundry and foundry will ultimately send those products to the original equipment say manufacturer for, for example. Now, the company who have supplied the machining components will be considered as suppliers in this case. Next external customer type is potential customers. That means, those customers who are presently not using the product, but they are capable of becoming customers. For example, there is a builder, he has purchased some land. Presently, they do not have any 
scope rather for some building some organizations or building some houses and so on but in future when the facility gets developed they will be in a position to build the complex or say build the society and so on so at present this builder is not in a position but he or she will be a potential customer for the building supplier company in future next concept is hidden customer so those people who can exert great influence over the product design there are some regulators based on their regulatory decision making people will get influence and they will buy the products or services there are some critics people based on their criticism people will have the influence of having the product or not there are some opinion leaders for example there are some religious leaders who will put their opinion on the people and based on their opinion people will buy the products or services then media will be also considered as hidden customer because they influence a lot on people's mind then corporate policy makers labor unions professional associations these are also considered as hidden customers based on their influence people will buy the product or services or decide to buy or the product or services so let us pause the video for a while and try to answer this question i hope you have gone through the question we will stop here for today's session next time we'll see the concept of customer perception